No matter how good you are at picking stocks, if you don't know all the Byzantine rules about what kind of accounts to keep your money in, or how to manage your personal finances, or how to get the most bang for your buck when it comes to major lifetime expenses, then you could be missing out on some terrific gains or costing yourself a fortune in all sorts of hidden fees. That's why every week I take you through my playbook in a segment that's entirely devoted to teaching you how to handle your personal finances, along with some basic investing principles. In order to get a better sense of what matters to you, I want you to send all of your questions to Twitter at Jim Cramer with the hashtag get a plan. Sorry, I wasn't very good on Twitter today. Really jammed with this market. But I will do my best to get back to you. Uh, oh, and while we're at it, it's always worth checking uh, your money .cnbc.com. Got terrific financial advice there. I admit this kind of stuff isn't as fun as picking stocks a little on a down day like today. It's not so bad. Over the course of your lifetime, though, it really could help you to build up more wealth than a couple of great stock picks can. And the simple truth is, is that I don't want you leaving that money on the table just because nobody could be bothered to explain, say, the finer points of retirement investing vehicles. With that in mind, here's a question from Mitch, who asks, and I quote, traditional or Roth 401k for grads starting full-time job in 28% tax bracket. Wary of potential tax climate when I'm 65. Boy, that was a good use of Twitter spaces. Now, I know I've talked endlessly about the benefits of using an individual retirement account, or IRA for short, and a 401k plan to invest for retirement. I've had them both. And I don't want to beat a dead horse here. But we haven't really gotten into the distinction between a Roth account and a regular one. And this is something I get a ton of questions about. Should I put my money in a Roth account or should I put one in a regular account? And is one of them wrong? Mitch asked about a Roth 401k, but only some employers choose to offer these to their workers. So to set the stage here, let me give you some background on the beautiful tax-favored vehicle known as a Roth IRA, which anyone can contribute to as long as they make less than $122,000 a year. I think that aside from the earned income tax credit, the Roth IRA may be the single greatest thing our government has done for lower income families since the end of the war on poverty, where, uh, alas, um, poverty won. I've told you all about how a regular IRA lets you take pre-tax income, invest it, and then your gains can compound year after year, decade after decade, totally tax-free until you decide to withdraw, start withdrawing money when you've retired. But a Roth IRA works differently. With a Roth, you make contributions with after-tax income. So, in other words, unlike a regular IRA, putting money into a Roth won't decrease, won't decrease your tax bill. On the other end, though, once your money is in a Roth IRA, you will never pay taxes on it again. As long as you ca your cash remains in the account, you don't pay capital gains taxes, you don't pay dividend taxes, and when you withdraw it, which you can do without penalty after the age of 59 and a half, Mm, closing in, you don't pay any income tax on your withdrawals. In other words, with a Roth, you pay taxes now so that you don't have to pay any income tax 30 or 40 years from now when you're retired. There's one more positive point about a Roth. After five years, you can withdraw the money you've invested, not your gains, just the amount you've contributed, and you won't get hit with that nasty 10% penalty, which is what happens when you try to withdraw money from a regular IRA before you hit that magic age of 59 and a half. And when you're closing, on it, closing in on 59 and a half, it doesn't feel very magical. So, you see, a Roth is fundamentally different from a regular IRA. With a regular one, you don't pay any taxes on your contributions now, and your gains don't get taxed within the account. But once you start withdrawing money, every penny you take out is taxed as ordinary income. Which means that when you're trying to decide between a Roth IRA or a 401k and a regular IRA or a 401k, you're basically deciding whether it makes more sense to pay income tax now with a Roth or to wait and pay income tax once you've retired with a regular account. In other words, you have to try to figure out whether you'll be in a higher tax bracket after you've retired or a lower one. Obviously, this is a complicated question that really has a lot to do with the specifics of your situation, your career, and simply how old you are. But my quick rule of thumb, for anyone whose marginal tax rate is 25% or less, 25%, which is most of America, I think you go with a Roth. Better to take the hit up front and then allow your Roth IRA to compound tax-free for the rest of your life. Remember, for those of you who don't have the time to pick your own diversified portfolio of 5 to 10 stocks, the smartest thing to do is just park your retirement money in a low-cost index fund that mirrors the S&P 500. As you get older, you can add some bonds, but really, until you actually retire, stocks should make up the majority of your retirement investments. I know I've said this before, but I'll keep repeating it until they take me off the air because it's so, so necessary, yet so contrary to the conventional wisdom. 
Well, all my books say it. If you don't understand, I got a much longer explanation. Back to Mitch's question and the idea of a Roth 401k. This works just like a Roth IRA, meaning you make contributions with after-tax income, and then you never pay taxes on that money again, except because it's a 401k plan is a much higher contribution limit, $17,500 per year versus $5,500 for an IRA. And there's one other big difference. You can't take advantage of a Roth IRA if you make more than $122,000 a year single or $179,000 if you're married and filing jointly. A Roth 401k, though, has, doesn't have any kind of income cap. No matter how much you make, you can take advantage of one of these as long as your employer decides to give you the option. Now, Mitch says his marginal tax rate is 28%. That's the point where I'd say go with a regular IRA and a regular 401k because they let you make contributions with pre-tax dollars. So the higher your your current tax rate is, the more valuable you'll find a non-Roth IRA or 401k. But he also says he's worried about where tax rates will be when he retires, say 40 years from now. I'll admit, if you believe the taxes are headed inexorably higher over the course of your lifetime, then a Roth 401k where you pay your taxes now and pay nothing in the future is the way to go even if you're making a lot of money in the present. I think, though, personally, the belief's mistaken. For those of you young people who only became politically conscious under the Obama administration, it may seem like there's no way to stop the tide of higher taxes. But history says differently. And I believe we can close the deficit without substantially raising taxes. My view. Not political. Mathematical. At the end of the day, though, this is both beyond our control and beyond our ability to predict. So here's the bottom line. The lower your present income, then the lower your taxes. A Roth 401k or Roth IRA lets you pay those low tax rates and, ne- and, now ne- and never worry about taxes again for your retirement money. So the less you make, the more likely it is that a Roth is for you. It's that simple. And when you're saving for retirement, don't worry about what could go catastrophically wrong 30 or 40 years in the future. Just worry about making the best choices right now. Don't move. Lighting around us next. 